Hey, what's up? This is Chosen, and it is time for the update to the TOS because we got a new season, season six. So, going to be another iteration of us getting things up to date here. And I've got some very special guests in Darth Micro and Veilshot, and then ZT Speed, one of our Diablo Mortal officers who's not on camera. So, let's get into it. Alrighty, what's up boys? How you doing DM? Doing good, Brad. How's your day? I am hanging in there. Can't complain. It's always good when we're uh, updating tier lists. How you doing, Veiled? Uh, I'm on a melee class still, so I'm a little mad. <laughs> rip, rip. I, I have a joke that every time I collab with Veiled, he's on a different class. So, holding true. And then, uh, Speed, how you doing off camera there? Doing great. You know, I swapped to Necro. So far, having a great time on that class. Cool, cool. And then uh, I've had DM and Veiled on the channel before, but go ahead and give us the quick, like, 20-second intro of yourself, Speed. Yeah, I'm ZT Speed. Um, I do YouTube sometimes. I stream sometimes, but primarily I um, am an officer, a uh, current leader of Aftershock United Prime. And I've been dealing with a lot of the day-to-day -day stuff, enjoying my time grinding Diablo, um, pushing the clan forward. Very nice, very nice. And uh, DM and I got to meet Speed at TwitchCon. Veiled uh, ditched us last second and didn't come to TwitchCon, <laughs> yep. but that's okay. No, we, no. I'm going to get all flu for next years, man. I, I know I will. <laughs> yeah, that's I'm all right. I'm glad that this got brought up, honestly, because like we bought our tickets and we all flew down there specifically because it was Veiled Shot's idea for us all to meet up at TwitchCon. <laughs> he said he already had the tickets and he just bounced on us. I couldn't believe this it. Is it. fake yep. news. Oh, <laughs> He God. got us all to go, and then he bailed. That's Leave right. a comment right now in the description. Bell shot. what's your problem? Yep, yep, yep. Come on now. But anyway, we're not going to turn this into a veiled roast. We're going to we're gonna stay on topic. What we like to do is uh, right here in the middle of the screen, that's what the uh, tier list looks like on the website for the different classes, the DiabloPro.gg website. And up in the top left, you'll see that's the numbers that go into the tier list and how it gets ported to the website. So we're just going to go through and talk about this stuff. We're going to talk about uh, things that should be adjusted, things that jump out to you, and we can just have a, a little discussion here to keep this up to date. So so, um, Vail, I'll start with you. Is there anything that needs adjusting from last month? Is there anything off the board that looks different? Right now, we've got Necro number one, Crusader number two, DH number three, Wizard number four, Monk number five, Barbarian number six. Is there anything that we should start off with here? Mm, I'll say there's a few ratings I would adjust uh, for Barb, and I think Speed would probably agree with me. I just got off of playing Barb for about three, four weeks here um, after never playing Barb. The damage on Barb, I would I would definitely drop. Like that, the Barb just does not deal damage when we're talking about like them hitting a single target character. You know, like when you're trying to fight those yellow elites that spawn in the wild, the Barb just has a tough time. And I would also probably bring up their support a little bit. Um, I found that with four piece Vithus, um, which I had a little bit of testing on just before I swapped off of Barb, um, uh, group sprint, uh, group damage buffs giving you an attack speed it's actually pretty powerful so yeah i actually agree with that point in particular because like i played a lot of monk and monk has support qualities but i mean not a, like barbarians got the same thing that the monk does like monk support is essentially you can drop a blessed damage aura and that's more or less what the barbarian does but we have monk in the nine so then yeah barb could probably go up I don't know how you feel about solo play and challenge rifts, but I feel like the monk was better in challenge rifts, and I feel like the DH is like way better in challenge rifts than a barbarian. Um, and solo play feels pretty bad as a barb, in my opinion, too. Okay, you want to yeah. jump in there, Speed? Uh, yeah, regarding the PvP, I think barbs are actually pretty strong for like the 4v4 formats, uh, such as Vault, uh, the Ancient Arena. But outside of that, like in BGs, it's very tough to be a strong barb player. Um, you know, you go in, you gotta take damage, but when there's six to eight players all just facing you, it's only a matter of time until you just go in and die. And um, that's not even talking about all these uh, undying rage bugs, the gladiator bugs that are still not fully fixed. 
Okay, let's uh let's not be too mean to Blizzard. No, I'm kidding. Yeah, it does suck that the uh the gladiator stuff and all that has been brutal. And Bard probably got it the worst, didn't they? Out of the like glitches and things oh, that functioned. Definitely. Right? <laughs> and I'm 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 yeah, some of my saltiness may have shown from my month and a half or so of playing Barb. But uh you know, despite the bugs, it is a very fun class to play, especially for um open world farming. Okay, well, we've got PvP at a 6 for the Barb, and it's actually the lowest of all the classes. Is that fair, or...? I think we should actually um, consider dropping all of the melee classes down a little bit for PvP, but we can start with Barb dropping maybe to a 5, if not a 4, because I think they would be the weakest PvP class. I, I, is there an argument to be made that Sailor's weaker than Barb in PvP, though? I mean, it doesn't bar not Barb with the immunity. Have some use? Not with the immunity for the whole team, I don't think. I think Seder has a lot more support built in. It also has a lot more CC potential. But I'm on thinking top of it, you have that high mostly block battleground. Like, I'm thinking BGs here, where like, yeah. it looks like Vel went to say something. Like, where you have to be in a party for the immunity even to work. There's eight players. I'm thinking solo impact in kind of a chaotic BG. Say there's more of a structured format, maybe even arguably better in the right than in battlegrounds. But that's just my take on it. Oh, for sure. Yeah, go ahead, Vail. Yeah, what I was going to say is I think speed has a really good point here. Like, you mentioned Vault specifically when he was talking about Barb. You kind of almost, not to like radically change the whole list, you almost need to separate PvP into like 3v, you know, free-for-all format and a 4v4 format and then the Battlegrounds format. Because I would say Seder and like a coordinated group type content, they're almost like a 9 or a 10. Like they're like so good because you can coordinate your immunity, you can coordinate your banner. And I remember working with like Uni and Darth in the Rite of Exile and I would pop the banner and Uni would literally just one shot everyone and then they would jump on us and they would be completely immune to everything but then you talk about battlegrounds and you, it's just the meme because you're like trying to get on your horse you get knocked off of it instantly uh you try to walk around you can't enter the fight people walk out of your banner at least as a barb um and to darth's point you can at least do something alone whereas Seder it feels pretty miserable in battlegrounds yeah, I, all of that, I've always said in my content forever that Seder really shines when you have coordinated group, like four people in voice chat, and it's great in that scenario. I, I agree 100%. We could explore maybe for next time, breaking up. It's not stuff that I can do right now with the algorithm and break the PvP up, so we're going to have to do our best to uh, do like an overall PvP. So we've got Barb at 5, Seder at 7. Should we maybe have Barb at 5 and Seder at 6? Or I think there should be a bigger gap between the range classes and melee classes for PvP specifically, just because of how strong the um or the range classes are compared. If I had to have my finger on the pulse, it'd be Wizard Ten, Necro Nine, D a DH like a seven or an eight, Monk one below, and then Barb and Sather below, whatever that is. That would be my takeaway. Okay, how's that look on the sheet? I think you guys can see it live there. So Barb 4, because PvP is the one, we're not going to spend, uh, you know, 20 minutes on every topic, but PvP is probably the one to get the most right. It is worth the most. Over on the right, you can see the waiting. Uh, PvP is worth the most. So Barb 4, 6, 8. Now, Darth came in with the spicy take that Necro oh. should not be number one. Veiled is going to be coming after you. I actually, so here's the thing. After this last patch, it, it's like shifted. Like, so for me, Necro and Wizard, they did entirely different things, but they were like equally as powerful in terms of how they shifted the PvP match, in my opinion. But with this last <laughs> update, like they instantly gave Necro like a bunch of dashes, which I don't think are extremely impactful. And then meanwhile, they gave Wizard like more range, which is like one of their strongest features, and an entire lockout move with their slow time, making people yeah. not be able to cast. Like it's so strong. Wizard, I think, is a ten, and Necro is probably a yeah, drop down. I don't, I don't really get it. Plus, it's it's like, look, Necro is maybe a maybe arguably super annoying, but they're they're annoying on an individual level where it's like you pick one person, you're like a Mausahar where you just lock them out for like five seconds, you don't get to play the game. Fuck you in particular, you don't get yeah, to play the no game. No one gets son. the Mauza Mausahu reference. What is I that? Mausahu League of Legends reference. A lot of people get that reference. Trust me, dude. That's a very popular game. My point being that you you single target down and you like lock one person out, right? And that's kind of your goal. You choose if you want to have damage or no damage. And if you go damage on necro your damage compared to a wizard is way less safe way less useful and way less of an aoe so it's for me it's hard to 
compare them because if would I rather have a 7k resonance wizard on my team or a 7k resonance necromancer? I mean, I know the one I'm picking, like in terms of battleground. So, this is why we have Uni in our clan. Yeah, for yeah. those of you that don't understand, Uni is a is a huge resonance wizard and a very good player. So he definitely uh, has a huge impact in PvP on, on the wizard. But uh, Speed, did you want to jump in there? Do these PvP ratings look okay to you? Oh, I I will stand by these ratings. I like them. Okay, cool. Well, for now, we'll we'll try to uh, touch on other topics. Um, is there any other ratings that stand out to you guys? Uh, DH still at four with support uh, as one of the lower ratings on the board. Is that fair still? You could maybe put it as a five because I know they have that new uh, ability that does like armor shred. It increases the amount of damage. At least you do, maybe the whole team. So there is a little more support there. Same yeah, with like the one's... fear, the fear. Um, I forget the name. The scatter mask, where you can vengeance and fear the enemies. Yeah, your speed's absolutely right on that. They they did something weird with the DH, which I completely disagree with. They tried to like make every class do everything instead of like giving each one like their own identity. Like DH now has like a same thing as Barb, where you can run abilities that like increase your team's damage when like they're supposed to be the first damage dealers. Um, so yeah, they actually do have a lot more support now. It's just awkward, <laughs> I guess. Okay. Yeah, I can uh, I can bump that up. Let's see other outliers that are on the board. Have and Barb just got a massive four in PvP. These guys yeah. are just so sad over there. They they need something. And that's rough <laughs> because PvP is worth the most. So being the lowest yeah. ranked in PvP means you're gonna fall down. So Barb Barb was already a seven point one before. Now they're a six point five. Um. And we're still going to have, if we leave it as is, if that's all we adjust, Necro would have gone down, but still be number one. And then Sater... I think we could, with as far as Necro goes, too, like I was looking at the numbers, and um, I maybe we're thinking of Holy Banner, but it's like Necromancer definitely does more damage than a Crusader. I mean, there's, I don't think there's any argument for that, right? Well, I think Seder actually has more burst potential damage, where Necro has way more damage over time. And, like, Satyrs can do some pretty crazy stuff in, like, rifts and stuff, like, grouping things up and then just spamming all your abilities. Like, the guaranteed crits on AoE abilities is just bonkers. Um, like, I'm able to clear Elder Rifts in, like, a minute 15. You just group up with Horus and then drop your cooldowns. Then group up everything with Horus, then drop your cooldowns. So, I don't know. I think I think Darth is right. Maybe for, like, sustained over time, but not with burst. So, we'd have to do our best to kind of, like, blend those two. So, maybe at least we tie them in damage between Seder and Necro. What do you guys think? Yeah, I mean, it, it's uh, Seder's an awkward one because, like, if you rate them in isolation, I think that Seder actually competes with the Necro. But if you rate them, like, together, like, as if you were doing group content, there's no contest. Like, Necro does so much more because they benefit from the banner too so it's almost like uh it's just an awkward thing to rate because to be honest like solo content in this game is few and far between so maybe that's worth less so maybe necro does do more damage if you consider that like Vader's damage buffs the whole team's damage which is like the awkward part about that that's what i was thinking because it's like that's that's synergy that's support that's not damage what i'm thinking yep, is like yep, you right. have everyone yep. in a room or maxing out on a test dummy and everyone's doing dps like i'm of the opinion and i would stand by it i think necromancer does the most damage in the game like if we have a test dummy where we're sitting there and everyone's like okay here's your four skills we have a banner whatever everyone attack a test dummy or a dungeon boss or whatever i i don't think it's dh and i don't think it's wizard i think i literally think a necromancer and full summon build with with a six p shepherd uh frenzy dark curse i think that's just the most dps in the game like hard hard yes and but maybe i'm wrong i wish we had a test dummy to test that i know everyone's yeah. got different resonance and everyone's got different sets and different builds but it's like a big test dummy would actually go a long way for this type of data yeah i agree with that i mean i remember um Granted, like, the stats aren't perfect, but I remember testing, and this is something that I guess I must have missed, but when Nec when DM was a Necro and I was a Wizard, we were running dungeons together, and we would, like, stare at each other's damage numbers. I was running, yeah. like, a Firestorm combo, like, running the Vithys. Like, I had a whole set together, right? Probably even more, like, 
pieces. You had a better building. synergy yeah. than I did with your build. Yeah. For sure. And he was doing way more damage. Like it was just like, it was honestly not really a contest. Like the, the summons, when you get that proper setup and you're talking about like, there's no, I guess like there's, you're, I consider like goldfish, like you're just doing whatever you need to do. And the boss can't really do anything to stop you. Uh, the damage really skyrockets. The damage numbers are lower though, when you consider PVP. So maybe you can put like Necro at like a nine there maybe. So nine's probably a good spot for them. Yeah, yeah PVP, the damage is way lower. I'm right? doing my best to kind of like hear what you all are saying and then come to a consensus. Right now I've got just three classes at nine with DH, Necro, and Wizard. And then I've got Seder at eight. Um, is that okay overall or? Yeah, I think that's Ooh. fine. I mean, that sounds closer to accurate. I just, I was looking at the number prior and it's like, can I really argue that a Barbarian and a Necromancer do the same damage? That's what I was looking at. It's like we had Barb at seven, we had Necro at seven, we had Wizard two points higher, we had Monk one point below, which means we believe Wizard does so much more damage than Necro that's twice as much as Necro increases on the Monk. And it's like, well, I think Necro blows the Monk out of the fucking water because I spent a lot of time on Monk. I know Vel just played Monk too. So that's where I'm coming yeah. at with the logic with the damage. Cool. Okay. All right, well, then I've got that adjusted. Um, and so I know Vale had the hot take last week of Necro should just be 10, like, across the board. <laughs> <laughs> there's an argument for it. To be, There's an argument for it, yeah. thing about Necro thing is I'll go, not go. only do, does it have damage like we've been talking about, but you also have, like, the bone armor. You have the immunity, the damage immunity you have all the CC on top of that damage. And that's what really makes Necros so strong. You have just everything going crazy and your enemies have to deal with everything. Yeah, I think okay. uh, I'm going to explore, maybe we could condense some of these and then have like a utility rating. And then you'd have like Necro would be 10 and and like, so yeah, there's some there's some opportunities to, to consider that stuff. Um, how about the weighting? Does the weight look good? I know this is Darth and uh, Speed's first time kind of looking at the sheet for a while. Do all the weights make sense? PVP has the most, then dungeons, because that's kind of like the two things you spend the most time in. Um, anything? Yeah, generally speaking, I like it. I would say maybe if anything, maybe bring the solo play down a little bit, but that's a very, um, you know, some people, they only play solo. Other people, they only play in groups. So I kind of see why you have it weighted that way. Okay. Darth, would, anything? Though, um, I, I am of the opinion because the Immortal ship does not mean anything and Battleground rewards are literally useless after a certain point. The PvP is probably weighted a little too high. Um, that's just my take off of it. I kind of think that in order to objectively be stronger in this game, the things that matter are leveling in dungeons. Uh, I would argue maybe even challenge rifts a bit because it's literally the only way to get the crystals. Maybe you could get carried by somebody else, but you still got to clear these things. Um, and challenge rifts are also important because that's the way you get your health difficulty. So if we're looking not, you know, at like free to play people starting the game as of today, and they're looking at a tier list for class, which I'm assuming that's our target demographic for this type of video, right? People want to know, I'm going to pick a class. What's the tier list? And so looking at this here, I think I would rate challenge rifts, maybe like an 8%. I would take that 3% out of the PVP. I would maybe bump up leveling a little bit, and you could take that a bit from solo play like speeds recommendation that's kind of looking at the weight that's my opinion but I'm, I'm only talking a few percentage shave off of each number so i don't think it's too crazy but I do, I do think having pvp rated the highest is a little is a little off in my opinion for what the game is yeah that's a good argument honestly i i actually agree with that i'm usually of the opinion that like don't do or build for content that doesn't progress your overall character um there's also like the other perspective where it's like does any of the content actually require any thought besides PvP? <laughs> like, like, that's I a good think... argument too. Yeah, because um, I, I was but... gonna, I was gonna say, Vale, the, our last iteration of this, the reason we had PvP the highest was because me and Vale were talking, and we were like, it's the only time that you're truly like where it matters. Like, like when you're fighting for right of exile, when you're when you're defending the vault, when you're raiding the vault. It's really the only time that it truly matters, which is why we ended up with PvP being huge, but it is a good argument and good points you were making. I'm just thinking from the average person, like a new guy's joining the game, they're not trying to run a 3,000-person clan. They're not 
you know, <laughs> they're probably not going to be in the Rise of the Exile. Um, that's kind of where I'm thinking about because it, it is a tier list for the average yep. guy, I, I would assume. I think you're pro if we look at these numbers, I'd say your numbers are probably pretty spot on with the changes speed recommended um, just for like the ultra competitive guy. But from like, we calm it down a little bit, maybe change just a little yeah, bit. Yeah, when you were talking, I was I was kind of adjusting things. Um, So let me pull this out. Let me pull the pen out here. So Necro stayed mostly the same. Crusader went down. DH eight point went down. Wizard eight point one stayed about the same. Monk seven went up, and then Barb went uh, down. Or no, wait, sorry, 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 sorry. Monk went down. I was uh yeah. Monk did go Monk down. Monk going down feels bad. Um, I think. Can we, is there an argument that we make that we can bump the eight challenge rifts to a seven, but monk to a six? I mean, I don't feel like the monk challenge rifts were that terribly bad. I felt like they had some some decent builds that give them enough time to work within it. I was able to push like four hundred combat rating higher. Granted, I got resonance and all that, right? But I mean, compared, I did all the classes with the same resonance, and compared to the other classes, um, other than like necro and like wizard, obviously. I was able to push just as far with Monk, definitely farther than I was able to push with Sather, and I definitely think yeah. it was better than Barb in the yeah, challenge rift scenario. That's what I was gonna yep. say. It's like uh, I agree with you. I think that it it's hard because, like, in my opinion, I agree with you in that like the difference should be bigger. But also, I think that like the range classes are so much better at like these content that it's like it's almost like Seder, Barb, Monk are fives. Maybe Barb's a little higher because of Undying Rage. And then you have the range classes; like they're just so much better in these. I agree with content. that. Yeah, the range. Yeah, I agree. Range is it's a e problem. Yeah, I and that's why it was always three out of the top four uh, classes on the tier list were ranged, and the only reason Seder scoots up is because of immunity and banner those two things are just so good that it helped kind of carry Seder into that into that role uh which means i did make the the adjustment you were talking about so necro stays one at uh at 9.49 and then it would be 8.28 the Seder is still at two and then 8.10 and 8.09 so it does stay the same three and four and the barb dropped, if anything. So yeah, the, the overall rankings did stay the same. Um, and it looks like things went kind of down, if anything, as we start to acknowledge some of these gaps between the melee and the range. So not a whole lot of crazy things, just uh, you know, some tweaks and kind of fine-tuning things. Yeah, and I would say that like at the end of the day, this is the way I think about it at the end of like the ratings. It's like, okay, if I'm gonna put up to group to uh, group together in like every piece of content, what do I want? Okay, first thing. I want a Seder, I want a Necro, I want my damage, I want my support banner, right? And then after that, it's like, I can kind of just have whatever. I'd rather just have three Necros, one Seder in my dungeon group, to be honest. Like, they're just the fastest dungeon group pretty much out there. Um, like, they can just stack the summon, stagger them or whatever. And I think that that's kind of just reflected. Like, get your Seder and then put together whoever you got left. Unless you're talking about PvP, in that case, I just think Wizard's the best class in the game. And that's why I always think Wizards are the best class, but, you know, PvP is is kind of pointless, so. Wizards seems to have the best of, like, everything. It has the Black Hole CC, like, a ranged Necro. It has the damage of, like, a DH. It also has a Blink, which is crazy mobility. So, I, and you brought up, a, uh, a just on our way out, the last thing I wanted to ask you guys. Um, I know you were talking about the best dungeon would be, like, one or two Satyrs and then, like, two or three Necros. What about, I know, uh, like, you and Speed and stuff have done a lot of Rite of Exile planning for, like, the Immortals and stuff like that, and, and as the Shadows. What would be, like, the optimal party right now for, like, a coordinated PvP? Let's say everybody has 3k resonance, everything's equal, skill is equal. What would be the optimal, uh, if you had, like, your pick? 4v4 <laughs> or 3v3? 8v8. 8v8. All right, Bill, okay, say okay. what we're all thinking. I was just going to say eight barbs. <laughs> eight barbs? <laughs> I'm not I even kidding. I, think that's I, I knew you were going to say that too, dude. I think if you can heavy stack eight barbs, it's actually unstoppable. Like, I'm not even we kidding. We have barb as a four. It, What's going if on here? The, well, if it's on offense, factor. definitely. I mean, we're talking yes. faux coordinated troll, I think is where he's going. Like, he, he, 
that would actually be annoying. I'm not going to lie. Like, if everyone, uh, assuming everyone's on the same level, though, he said same resonance. I mean, if dealing with a barbarian is, is... Eight of is, them? Yeah, no, you get, you would get ran down like 300. I mean, it would, that would actually be really annoying. But then, okay, okay, hold on, counter-argument, counter-argument, all right? So, no, 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 fuck that. You guys really, really think Necro is the character. I'm telling you, like, Necro's cool, but it's the one that sits in the back and, like, throws, you know, it instigates the fights with the bone pillar, and then it lets the real bully show up and actually fight it out. The real bully is the wizard, right? Well, you got eight wizards, and with eight crystals everywhere, freezing everyone eight times, and then with one of them with the new goddamn helmet that literally makes it where your skills don't even work. So the barbarians running in just die anyway because the undying doesn't work because all your skills are canceled due to the helmet. Like, there could be some... There could yeah, be some right. problems. It's eight wizards with black holes, and then you just can't move past the Ooh, choke point. The lane <laughs> is literally always blocked. Yeah, like, I would have, al I would have almost said two wizards... A necro and then whatever melee class can be like the most disruptive like two wizards alternating their crystal and black hole and then a necro there for the cc and the support and then whatever melee class is the most disruptive i do I think take... go speed if I, could take... yeah. if I could pick my team i would do two wizards four necros two barbs oh for the eight yep for the eight yep that could be a good one i, I kind of agree with that honestly yeah so what about threes? What about Riot of the Exile? Then, when you taking your threes, triple bar? Are you going? Triple you going triple barb again, Velcha? Okay, uh, fine. If you're gonna go in with that troll shit, and we all know it's parties, so I'm going triple Crusader, and we're hiding in the corner, and we're alternating our immune banner, and we're never moving, and we're just gonna sit there and immune into immune into. What immune. happens what in that happens? scenario? What happens? Yeah, I wonder what happens. There's, I, well, I know there's a countdown. There's like, there's a clock. But what happens? Like, if 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 it comes down to three v three and both sides just refuse to engage because defenders advantage, I don't even know what happens if there's six people. I think, I, 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 I think it's based on Dark Clan ranking. Actually, I think it, I think it's actually based on Dark Clan ranking. <laughs> it might be. So if we're the higher Dark Clan next time, we should just hole up in the corner. <laughs> And just immune shield. Yeah, immune so are you shield. telling me the, the 900 IQ play is it doesn't matter your resonance? You can all have one resonance. The only thing you need is the blessed pebble as your only gem so you have the duration increase. And then what you do is you just make sure that all your free to play plebeians are getting a billion marks every single day. This right? is totally going to be a veil shot video. This tomorrow. is the ultimate yeah. technical free to play strategy. Everyone only has blessed to the pebble. The way the cooldown for the sh for the immune damage only, and then three crusaders sit in the corner with the highest marks in the shadow. War. we have solved the game. <laughs> he gentlemen. calls it. He calls he, it blessed he, of the pebble. He's got to make sure he keeps us on the down low. Now that he's the leader, he's got to make sure he keeps our strategies all yep. secret. That's what's wrong. Delete this. Don't put this in the video. <laughs> they watch DMs stream and then they stream snipe uh, in the in the fights. The right of exile. <laughs> Gonna take our brilliant tactic. It's gonna be a veiled shot video tomorrow. I can't wait to see what thumbnail it is. <laughs> <laughs> One thing I want to try and write the three v three is corner myself with three necros and just put bone pillars. So it's like if you want to <laughs> fight us, like come through the bone pillars, like, and then we'll of course have our um, uh, immunity shields up, the bone armor. So I want to try that. I think that'd be funny. Awesome. Well, yeah. hey, uh, I know we kind of went off tangent there, but it was a lot of fun, boys. Thanks for it's a three-hour video. That's it's right. That's right. Hey, but no, I, I like the long-form discussions that are that are informative. And uh, thanks Damn. for got scammed. Wait, hold on. Let's let's have uh, Speed do the exit. Oh, the exit oh, we want Speed to do, do the well, uh, speed, no. speed. Speed. You want to wrap it up? Sign off. It's the first you call sign it off? Him, right? So doesn't he get a? All right. Yeah. All go right. for it. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment on not only this video but all of Darth's videos, all of Vale's videos, all of my videos. There it is. Don't, the most important videos are mine. Blow me up. <laughs> you know we got like 120, 130 subs. Let's make that a thousand by tomorrow. Let's, see Let's go, ladies and gentlemen. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, this this whole uh, this whole production has been hijacked, and I am just now here for the ride. In the description yeah, the of Brad's <laughs> video right now, click the link to Speed's channel and subscribe. In the pinned comment of Brad's video will be Speed's channel. All right. You guys are awesome. Thanks, DM. Thanks, Veiled. Thanks, Speed. And uh, this will all be available at DiabloPro.gg, where you can pull up the uh, the up to date tier list. Thanks, guys. See ya.